Hey everyone, during these crazy times, toilet paper has become quite the hot commodity. If you've been to the store and seen scenes like this, maybe you've thought about an alternative. If so, keep watching, because this video is for you. All right, everyone, thank you so much for checking out Saving Green, your source for sustainability on a budget. So today we're going to talk about toilet paper or TP, if you will. I need TP for my bum hole. If you live in anywhere else outside of Western Europe and the United States, chances are you may not see toilet paper everywhere you go. In fact, you may see bidets. Now, bidets have been around for quite some time. They started in France acquiring the name bidet, meaning little pony, meaning something you kind of hop onto and just let a rip. And a little squirt of hopefully warm water will clean your bum, uh, get all the poop off, and allow you to go about your day. Now, during World War I and World War II, bidets were associated with brothels, and therefore the American soldiers that went overseas decided not to adopt that technology back into the U.S., promoting toilet paper use. And a lot of the big brands like Scott, which really developed the, the modern toilet paper role as we know and love in the late 19th century, they um, really proliferated dramatically here in the U.S. and, of course, has become the standard of care. But it's not the case elsewhere, and I wanted to kind of think about, well, why is that? Now, our home, built in the 1980s, is blessed with two bidets. And I admit, we don't use it as often as we like, but I have started to use it more, especially since everything's been so crazy with toilet paper these days. And it's been a pretty easy transition. It takes some getting used to, and yeah, it feels a little bit weird, but it's really not that bad. If you've looked at any sort of statistics about toilet paper, I don't know why you would do that unless it really makes me reevaluate my life choices, but I have, and I'll share some of the highlights with you. And granted, these statistics are kind of all over the map, and the averages, again, seem to vary quite a bit by where you're getting your information from. But on average, about five to six billion dollars a year is spent in the US on toilet paper. And that amounts to about 57 squares per day for the average person. And that accounts for about 50 pounds a year of toilet paper. That is obviously not really recyclable. So toilet paper itself though is, and you may find recycled toilet paper products which are more environmentally friendly, and that can range from 25% post-consumer content to almost 100% post-consumer content. But the brands that we know and love that contain the softest and most decadent and absorbent bath tissue tend to be of virgin trees, meaning they are not post-consumer content, and they tend to be a little bit less environmentally friendly. Toilet paper takes not just wood to create the pulp and the paper, it requires quite a bit of processing. It requires a lot of water to soften the wood and create the pulp in the first place, as well as different chemicals, sometimes chlorinated products to bleach and sterilize the tissue. And it takes energy to compress and strain and ultimately compact the pulp into the right form and then mill it down into the toilet paper product that we use. So all of that adds up. And I wanted to create a little spreadsheet, as I love to do, to quantify each of these metrics based on price, based on environmental impact, to settle once and for all, which is better, toilet paper or a bidet. Looking at this spreadsheet, what I have here is <clears throat> a breakdown of 20 or so common different brands of toilet paper, their respective distributors, and what the ultimate cost per square is, based on the number of sheets per roll, the number of rolls per carton, and the price of those packages. And you can see here that the average is about 450 sheets per roll at about 36 and change rolls per carton, and $39, so a little over a dollar per roll, okay? That breaks down to about 0.3 cents per sheet and about 2.8 cents per poop. Now, I got that number, and I'll show you down below, by multiplying a few different things together. It's pretty straightforward, and I'll get to that in a moment. Comes out to your dollar per day per person, how many dollars per month people might spend on toilet paper, and dollars per year. Now, these might be a little lower than you may be expecting, and that's because these are based on pretty much my averages. That means that I consume about 19 squares per day of toilet paper, assuming an extra 10 of kind of miscellaneous use. So if I'm blowing my nose or whatever, um, and of course for women using makeup or other reasons, that consumption may go higher. Now, a lot of the articles that I was looking at actually put consumer consumption at about 57 squares per day per person. 
So now these are the averages that people have quoted as to real world domestic toilet paper consumption per capita at 57 sheets per day. That would account to 44 rolls per year, which people say they're rotating the rolls about every five to seven days. So that's pretty close. It's up to a family of four, that becomes $193 per family. So what about the environmental impact of these things? Well, the energy required to produce a roll of toilet paper from manufacturing averages that I found is about 1.25 kilowatt hours. The amount of wood could be 12 pounds of raw material, but again, that number, big asterisk there because that may be an over exaggeration. Water consumption, I've seen between 17 and 36 gallons per roll. So that on average, let's say 25 gallons per roll. Now for trees consumed, again, this is the low end of the estimates, but they were saying for a typical thousand pound tree, you may get 800 rolls of useful uh, material or 800 rolls out of the useful material for wood. So let's just say 800 rolls per tree. And for carbon, there is 568 grams per kilogram of toilet paper that is produced as a waste product of virgin or non-post-consumer content for toilet paper. Now that is about 20% more inefficient than your recycled types of toilet paper, which comes out to just under 400 grams per kilogram. Now, just while we're on this topic, the cost averages actually, believe it or not, is a little bit less expensive for the virgin than recycled. I don't know if that's just the data set that I found here, or perhaps recycled toilet paper, it may be a little bit thinner, maybe need a little bit more. So it ends up being a little bit more expensive actually for that reason. So what are the annual totals? Well, water use, believe it or not, you may think would be higher for the bidet because you're using water to squirt the bum in addition to flush. It turns out that for the average flush, let's say is 1.5 gallons per flush. Again, you can get more efficient toilet bowls these days that may be as efficient as 0.8 gallons per flush but you can also get old school toilet bowls that have five gallons per flush. So 1.5 I thought was a reasonable average. It turns out only a quarter gallon is used per spray or per session based on reports that I've read. So that really doesn't add much water, but nonetheless, I did include it in the metrics here. It turns out that the water required to produce a roll of toilet paper is actually more of an impact than the added use of a bidet. So that comes down to about 4,500 gallons of water use if you wipe with toilet paper versus 1200 gallons per year if you use a bidet. So you're actually using less water if you use a bidet, kind of counterintuitive. And then all the other metrics, just the bidet just blows it out of the water. Why? Because there's no energy use. Granted, if you do heat the water, yes, there is a little amount of energy needed from your water heater, but because the volume is so low, it's not gonna make a significant impact on your electricity bill. So I just didn't quantify that. There's no wood you need in the bidet, and there's no carbon exhaust needed in the bidet because you're only using water. There's no material, no manufacturing cost, and no added burden on your septic or sanitation systems as well. Some studies have shown that the rate of hemorrhoids and the rate of urinary tract infections, things of that nature, may actually be down with the use of a bidet, but other studies have shown that certain uh, water-loving bacteria like Pseudomonas may be higher, not necessarily in a clinically significant manner, but higher nonetheless on bidet handles and on bidet toilets than in standard toilets. So the data as far as health benefits are a little bit lacking, but it seems like that overall you can get cleaner with a bidet. And why is that? Well, think about running through the mud. If you're running through the mud, are you gonna wash your shoes off with just a towel? Or are you gonna want some water to get that stuff off? Probably use some water. So it really does make sense that the bidet would actually get you cleaner and maybe a little bit healthier. But from a financial standpoint, it's really a slam dunk. The bidet is the way to go. So not only is it more environmentally friendly, but it's easy and it's safe and it'll save you money at the end. Now, is it easy to get? Yeah, if you live in an old house like I do, maybe you're lucky enough to have one. If not, you can get attachments to your toilet. A lot of them are very popular in Asian countries that can have custom streams and custom little extensions and knobs and gadgets that will allow you to customize to your heart's content the angle and pressure and everything else that will make you comfortable. And those can run you ever between a hundred bucks and a thousand bucks. So your break even point will certainly be variable depending on your use. 
If you're spending between $150 and $200 a year on toilet paper, then you're gonna pay off your bidet in just a few years with the additional upfront cost of purchasing a bidet and maybe the installation cost. You will still, in the long term, make your money back by switching to a bidet. So thank you so much for checking out the channel. I hope this was helpful. I hope that it's opened your hearts and minds to the possibility of changing your habits away from using toilet paper every day and doing what the rest of the world has been doing for a long, long time. And thanks again, please like and subscribe. Comment below if you have any experience with a bidet um, or if you have experience with toilet paper and uh, you know which of those you have found most beneficial and pragmatic in your life. So I uh, really appreciate your time and I'll see you next time on Saving Green. Thanks. Thank you.